I do think it's a fact that a lot of people have already experienced, I have myself, and that goes on in this movie, that some of these really tragic things that happen in life are the very same things that show you how to live a more authentic, fuller life yourself going forward. And you couldn't have done it without having gone through that really trying adventure in the process. Hey Logo, I'm Jim Parsons, and this is First Best Worst. My first reaction upon reading spoiler alert was tears. The best way I think to describe Michael and Kit's relationship is two people who love each other enough to figure out how to make allowances for each of them to be who they really are. They're not at all the same person, and that's one of the charming things about them is that they love each other enough to make it work and bridge those differences ultimately. My first impression upon meeting Ben, we were on a Zoom. I felt within about a minute and a half that we understood each other when we spoke. There was no like, what is, is that your sense of humor? Or what do you mean by that? Like there seemed to be a common language we spoke. And again, I felt it really quickly. I was hoping that this would work out and he would be the one to play kid. Probably that first date scene. I didn't know Ben until we started work on this film, and so it was Michael and Kit getting to know each other, but I was also getting to know a new friend in a lot of ways. The worst date I've ever been on, very, very early on into my relationship with my now husband, I bought him a CD, and I gave it to him when I met him for dinner. And he knew that I was an unemployed actor, and he knew that I was using part of my unemployment money to buy him this. He was like, you shouldn't have done that. And I think he felt bad, but we've never forgotten it. It was a Mariah Carey CD. <laughs> and, um, and I think he feels now he wish he hadn't have reacted that way, but I understand why he was being protective. Uh, maybe a little judgmental, but I think mostly just protective. I'm very fortunate that the worst date I ever had also turned into my husband. So that's pretty, that's pretty good bad date. The worst first date activity and again, this was literally my first date with my husband. We ended up at a karaoke bar. For some people, it'll be a great idea. I don't enjoy karaoke. Again, it worked out. We ended up getting married, so maybe it's wrong to say it was the worst activity, but I still cringe a little when I think about having to hit that karaoke bar. I don't believe that I sang at karaoke. He sang with no sense of irony, or probably connection to me, it was just a song, uh, I Finally Found Someone. Isn't that Cher? That's pretty cheesy and sweet. <laughs> the very best part about having my husband as a producer on this film was when he watched me read the memoir that this is based on. He saw how moved I was by it and he said, do you think it should be a movie? And I said, I don't know. And so he read it and he was the one who approached Mike, Michael Osiello and said, we'd love to option this if you'd allow us to. So the best part is that without him, there would be no movie <laughs> or, or I wouldn't be in it. I very often refresh my memory of the memoir and went back to whatever moment we were about to portray on screen. The first time I read that book, it made such a heavy emotional impact on me that rereading what he had written about it pretty much brought me right back there and set a tone for the scene. Best Sally Field movie. Oh my God. Best Sally Field movie for me is Norma Ray. She's phenomenal in everything, but she has an Oscar for that. And it's, if you watch it, if you've never seen it and you watch it, you immediately understand why. She is just a, a powerhouse and just so dynamic. And she still is. Um, uh, yeah, but Norma Ray, that's my favorite Sally Field movie. I have a memory of smoking pot for the first time. I was in high school and one of my friends I don't even know where it came from. I have no idea, it was so long ago now, but I remember we were in the woods by our subdivision and we smoked. And I remember going back to my house and I remember vividly <laughs> being in my bedroom and us laying on the floor watching this candle. And that was the first stereotypical fit of laughter. No idea what we were laughing at, but I mean crying, tears. It was gorgeously psychotic. Oh God. Oh, thank you for asking that. That was a lovely memory. JR's. It was so special to be in a place where I felt free to be gay. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. Hopefully most people don't as much understand that anymore, but it felt so kind 
and exciting, but, but really the kindness is the memory that prevails. I loved it. Oh gosh, the best advice I could give on making love last, have empathy for the other person involved and for yourself. Hopefully the smooth times are long and continuous, but inevitably, even in the best case, there will be hiccups and there will be things that you blame them for and there'll be things that you blame yourself for. And that's just the way it goes. And you have to learn to forgive them and you have to learn to forgive yourself. And, and once you do that, you get onto a, a, another level of the love and it's lovely. At some point, due to walking in the shoes of these men going through this, walking in their realization of how short life can be, I, I had a self-realization that, that there's nothing so painful as, as holding in a confession of fondness, of love for another person, not just romantic, but friend or anything. I wanted to be more free going forward with my, my profession of adoration for certain people and, and things in life. I grew up watching a lot of movies in the 80s and 90s that told similar love stories and really well-rounded and full and with tragedy and heartfelt moments and, and, and a realization of life in them. But they were almost always about a straight couple. I would have loved to have seen a movie that touched on all those universal human themes that happen to have a gay couple at its center. And as an actor, I don't think I ever dreamed that I would be an active participant in a relationship like that, in a movie like that. I just feel really grateful for that and, and very excited about it, actually. I loved doing it. Spoiler alert is in theaters now. Check it out. <laughs>